morning. Today is July 20th, and this is The View with Catherine Chang. Today's topics are the 19th DPP National Congress and the rumors of a COVID-19 patient in the airport. First, I want to talk about the 19th DPP National Congress. The ruling party, Democratic Progressive Party, held the 19th National Congress yesterday. President Tsai Ing-wen, as the party chairperson, delivered an important speech. I think President Tsai's speech was not only expressing her firm position to China, but also a slap in the face to KMT. There are several points. A, President Tsai highlighted four major missions for the party. They are constitutional reform, cultivate young talent, defend Taiwan of democratic values amid global uncertainties, and win the Kaohsiung mayoral by-election. Let's look into the third point, defend Taiwan democracy and also kind of amid global uncertainties. And this is referring to China. President Tsai said that liberal democracy and human rights is the most important value in Taiwan. DPP is the ruling party, which has the responsibility to defend the Taiwan value. We are not going to bow to authority and nil to intimidation. I think this is a strong declaration that places pressures on China. Also, I want to mention that the CCP Chinese Communist Party not only suppressed Hong Kong, but also requests the Taiwanese officials in Hong Kong to sign an endorsement of One China Principle. Of course, the Taiwanese official in Hong Kong did not sign. They returned to Taiwan after the work visas expired. And today, the Menon Affair Council countered back by saying that they will not extend Hong Kong diplomats' work visa too. Therefore, I think that what President Tsai said yesterday, not going to bow, is making a clear position to China. B. President Tsai's proposed constitutional reform is totally a slap on KMT's face because KMT is afraid of constitutional amendments. Remember last Friday, KMT occupied the legislative yuan and said that they want to abolish the control yuan. If you want to abolish the control yuan, you have to amend the constitution, which is what KMT is afraid of. And why is KMT afraid of constitutional amendments? Because KMT is worried that the ruling party DPP will modify the territory and even the national anthem in the constitution. And that will be the same as declaration like a declaring a Taiwan independence. And see, I want to talk about our former president, Chen Shui-bian. He also attended the vote yesterday, where he was sentenced to 20 years in prison for corruption in 2008 after seven years in jail. He was granted medical parole starting from January 5th, 2015. It means that he can just stay home, you know, so long as he doesn't participate in political activities. But what about yesterday? He went to vote, right? DPP caucus whip Ke Jianming claimed that Chen Shui-bian did not join the meeting and he just voted and left. So he did not violate the Si Bu principle. Si Bu is for no. What is that? What are they? Not on stage, not giving a speech publicly, not accepting media interviews, not talking about politics. Well, second issue, I want to talk about rumors of a COVID-19 patient in the airport. There was an important case of COVID-19 in Taiwan yesterday. Well, he was a man um, in his 40s returning from Hong Kong. However, rumors said that he visited the Cathay Pacific office in Terminal 1 and had a meal at the food court. And also, he even kind of interact with many Cathay Pacific employees. However, the CCC denied it. CCC said that these are rumors and they reported this to the police. So that's just don't try to mention that they are rumors. Here are the top stories. Today we have zero confirmed cases. Talking about Hong Kong issue, Hong Kong police arrested pro-democracy politicians on Friday who set to run for legislature. We're talking about that with a vice president of the People Power Party, Pan De Ju, who won the pre-democracy uh, primaries, has been charged with account of inciting others to take part in an unlawful assembly sedition, tensions, and disordering conduct in a public place. 
And the charge for unlawful assembly comes from a January protest where Tim shouted, Liberate Hong Kong, revolution for our times. However, you know, this slogan at that time was not illegal in January. And the police are kind of a rhetoric actively charging Tim based on the new laws. I mean, the new national security law. And this is ridiculous because thousands of people chanted the same slogan in the parade. Are the police planning on arresting them as well? On the other hand, top protests, and we're talking about, except for that, the top post at Taiwan's Hong Kong office forced out of, for refusing to sign one China declaration. And the acting director general of Taiwan representative office in Hong Kong, Gao Mingcun, has returned to Taiwan after he refused to sign an endorsement of Beijing's one China principle and was denied an extension of his work visa. Minister of the Interior Chen Guoyong, uh, Xu Guoyong, he uh, kind of spoke up and said that Taiwan is a sovereign and independent country and it's not part of China. And the government will never compromise on sovereignty. And also, UK signaled that it will suspend extradition treaty with Hong Kong. UK Foreign Secretary, we're talking about Dominic Rabb, told a British media Sky News on Saturday. And he said that one of the things that we review is our extradition agreements. And I will be updating the House on the conclusions of that review on Monday. As the China-U.S. relations continue fraying amid escalating tensions on a series of topics, U.S. Defense Secretary Mark Asper said that China has the ambition to display U.S. According to an official statement, he said that China put the party first, and we have very different ambitions and value sets. And if we don't wake up to the long-term challenge and the possible threat that China presents to us, we may find ourselves living in a world different from what we want to live in. On the other hand, Taiwan Invasion Prevention Act to be introduced to U.S. Congress this week. U.S. Republican Congressman Ted Yoho, the one who will introduce the bill, say that well, the bill will go to the point where it authorizes an AUMF, and that is authorizing for use of military force if China invades Taiwan. And it will be a sunset, kind of sunset uh, act for the five years, and that the AUMF, and that would also the president to use force. MOFA spokesperson Joanne O oh expressed her gratitude by saying, she said MOFA will continue to monitor the progress of the case and maintain close contact with friends in the U.S. Congress to defend Taiwan's free and democratic way of life. Alas, I want to share with you, Taiwanese-born scientist Lin Yingcong became the first person from Asia and the 12th in human history to dive into the deepest part of the Earth and the Challenger Deep in the Mariana Trench. And you can see he held a Taiwan national flag and took pictures with the uh, Cardian Oceanic founder Victor Vesovo. And, you know, this is very touching. So I want to say, good job. This is the pride of Taiwan. That will be the view for today. Um, this is Monday. How's your Monday? I hope everything went well. And so I'm going to see you tomorrow. I'm Catherine Chong. Bye.